You see this bracket over here? It has 32 different hardcore bands on it, and today they're gonna duke it out to determine who is the greatest hardcore band of all time. We got a mixture of early hardcore, we got a mixture of modern hardcore, some melodic hardcore, some tough guy hardcore. It's all kind of mixed in here. Of course, not every hardcore band is there, but a good fair chunk are. So, hey, how's it going? I'm your friendly neighborhood gatekeeper, Dan Frampton. How's about you like and throw me a couple pancakes before we get started? You know, I have 8.5 thousand subscribers on this channel, which is pretty good, but if you want to see me do a 24 hour live stream, we got to get this to 10,000 subscribers. Easy peasy, we can make this happen. No big deasy. If I said it once, I said it a million times. Only 35% of you are subscribed, so you should change that if you're not subscribed. With all that being said, let's go over to our bracket over here. Now everything is pretty small over here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the left side and then the right side, um, and then we're gonna get to a finals and we're gonna determine who the biggest and most bestest hardcore band of all time is. So let's start at the very, very top. We got the number one seed Black Flag going up against newcomer Habak. And I gotta say, even though this new band is really, really good, they're no Black Flag. Black Flag is definitely moving on here. All right, another matchup of Young versus Old. We got Gorilla Biscuits versus Gel. Now, Gorilla Biscuits, ultimate posi core band ever. If anybody was to ask you, hey, name a posi core band, the first band you're gonna say is Gorilla Biscuits. They're timeless, they're still going. Okay, everybody that wears like a champion hoodie is inspired by these guys. These guys make you want to just like live a better, cleaner, happier life, okay? Gel, even though they are a hot brand new band, they aren't what Gorilla Biscuits bring to the table. Gorilla Biscuits, absolutely legendary. Moving on, easy, easy, easy. Oh, another one here. We got Young versus Old. Big Laugh, new hardcore band versus Earth Crisis, which is one of the most militant bands that ever existed. People that are still putting X's on their hands, people that are fighting for the rights of like animals and veganism and that kind of stuff. It all starts with Earth Crisis. All right, battle between the 80s and the 90s over here. We got Bad Brains laying it down in DC. Absolutely legendary band. Going up against youth crew band, Mouthpiece. Now. Even though I personally, in the year 2023, revisit Mouthpiece more than Bad Brains, like that's just like more my vibe, I just think that's more fun to listen to right now. And believe me, that's just a personal thing, but there's no way in this bracket I'm picking Mouthpiece over Bad Brains. It's Bad Brains all day, every day. This is where it's gonna be changed up a little bit, okay? We got Judge, very militant band over here, going up against new band, Scowl. Now, Judge, yes, of course, they're legendary. They are kind of scary, okay? They have kind of like a mixed reputation. They might be seen as skinheads, but some people see that as being like ultimately alt-right or whatever, but I don't think that they're any of that, okay? They are just, they're Judge. Mike Judge is just up there singing. He's not the same Mike Judge that did Beavis and Butthead, okay? That's not the Mike Judge we're talking about, but it is a hardcore singer. But Scowl, one of the coolest bands, uh, kind of of all time, I think, you know what I mean? And they're a brand new band, kind of been going for a couple years now, and in this one, I'm actually taking Scowl. Even though Judge is more legendary, there's more like stories about them, there's more lore there, I think Scowl is just a better band. Oh, this is a tough one. <laughs> oh, this one sucks. Okay, Have Heart, we got like Massachusetts Straight Edge going up against Sweden's Sweetheart Refused. Now personally, I think Have Heart is a much better band. I listen to them a lot more. 10 times out of 10 times, I would choose to listen to Have Heart over Refused. But there was a time in my life where Refused were like the top of the tops, okay? Because they did really change things with their album, The Shape of Punk to Come. Their story is very, very legendary. And it'll never be forgotten. It's gonna go down in the annals of time with punk rock history. And for that, they have to move on here, right? This one breaks my heart just looking at it, okay? We got Hate Breed, which is a band that I never cared for, okay? Never, never a big Hate Breed fan, but they got massive. They took hardcore to a lot of people. They're playing huge metal festivals. You know, they're a hate breed. They really crossed over from hardcore to the metal world seamlessly without having to change much about them. You know what I mean? So for that, you gotta respect it all. Kid Dynamite, they existed for a couple years. And the years that they existed are some of the best years of any punk band. And I personally like Kid Dynamite a million times more than Hatebreed. But for the purposes of this video, Hatebreed need to move 
on. Okay, this is the final first round on this side of the bracket. We got Title Fight going up against Soul Glow. Possibly two of my favorite bands of all time. Probably one and two, depending on the day, you know what I mean? And today is going to be a different answer than it will be tomorrow, than it was yesterday. I don't know who I'm going to pick right now. How am I going to justify which one of these bands move forward? Just know that it could be just a, a coin toss. It might as well just be a coin toss. But Title Fight have so many great albums, so many great songs, so much legacy that they left down in such a short amount of time. But Soul Glow are doing some of the craziest compositions, putting together some of the most amazing music that I've ever heard, ever, and bringing their message and reaching a whole lot of people with it. Like, I love it so, so very much. And I love Title Fight just as much. I'm just not sure who I'm going to put forward here. And if I was going to be like the last band that I listened to, I have no idea. I, I listen to both of them all the time, okay? They're number one and two of my favorite bands of all time uh, right now. Uh, but... I'm gonna have to put forward title fight, for sure. Okay, we're down to the conference quarterfinals over here, and we got Black Flag going up against Gorilla Biscuits. You got Black Flag who laid the whole pattern of like just tour, 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 record, go out, tour, 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 record, the, that, that like business plan that people are still doing to this day, versus Gorilla Biscuits who are legitimately still going to this day, and who I like a whole lot more, but... Yeah. You can't put Gorilla Biscuits overall on top of Black Flag, so I gotta put Black Flag through. You see how I'm putting my personal bias aside to try to come up with the, the real best hardcore band here? Because a lot of these, I would have chose different bands if it was based on bands I listen to more often. Earth Crisis and Bad Brains. Okay, this is actually kind of an easy one, even though they're both kind of legendary bands. Uh, this is a Bad Brains round. Okay, next up, we got Scowl versus Refused. Now, if this was based on bands I prefer today, I would definitely say Scowl 100%. But like I said, Refuse is kind of going with punk rock all the way to the grave. So they're moving forward here. Got some jerk out here just beeping. We got someone backing up down the alleyway back here. Okay, this one is going to be kind of arguable depending on who you are. We got Hatebreed, who I said brought their, their sound and their vibe to a whole different audience. They really scaled up in a way that hardcore bands don't normally do. But Title Fight kind of stayed at that hardcore level but made people go absolutely crazy. People just absolutely put their life and limb on the line for Title Fight. And in my opinion, Title Fight write better songs and put on a better live show, just like objectively speaking. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know it's not really objectively. There are a lot of people that prefer Hatebreed, and I totally get that, not to take anything away. But I actually think that Title Fight is a stronger band than Hatebreed. They're moving on in this one. Oh, God. <laughs> now, this is where the comment section might get a little spicy, a little heated. Who's a better band? in the history of punk rock and hardcore between Black Flag and Bad Brains. This is, this is kind of like a finals match, but we're only in the semi-finals of this conference right now. So we're gonna say that this one is gonna go to, based on musical talent, songwriting, performances, and overall cool factor. Okay, it's going to Bad Brains. It's absolutely going to Bad Brains because Black Flag, they kind of did things, yeah, a little bit angular, you know what I mean? They didn't really ab abide by a lot of like the musical conventions, you know what I mean? And that's kind of cool, that's kind of just like is what it is, but um, if you're gonna tell somebody to listen to something and for them to be impressed by it sonically and to see how cool they are and everything, I think Bad Brains is just a more impressive band. Refused and Title Fight. Okay, so this is gonna be one of my favorite bands currently versus one of my favorite bands when I was a kid. And I think personally, if I'm looking at them from a technical standpoint, I think, oh man, they're both very talented musicians though. They both put on very good shows uh, and they both contribute something completely different to the whole like, I don't know, punk history, culture, whatever you want to call it. Um, if it's bands that I like more and think write better, cooler songs, it's Title Fight. But Refuse were kind of very ambitious in what they did and very fiery in their history. Okay, we are, ah, damn. This could go either way, but we're putting Refused, we're putting Refused to the, 
to the conference finals, but who's gonna go on to the overall finals? This is gonna be to determine who's going into like the Super Bowl of this right now between Bad Brains and Refused, and I just think that like Bad Brains is just the better band. Easily, I don't even think it's arguable. Now we're going over to the other side. We're gonna venture on over to this side of the bracket where the first matchup we're gonna see is between Minor Threat, DC, legendary band, Ian MacKay, kind of set the whole standard for Straight Edge, set the whole standard for DIY. You know, they did the whole thing on that side of the, of the country and really left their name and their mark forever and ever and ever and ever. Going up against Trapped Under Ice, Who's a great band? You got Justice out there being kind of like the modern day Rick to life, but but, but actually cool, you know? Uh, so I don't know who would ever pick Trapped Under Ice over Minor Threat in this kind of thing, because Minor Threat clearly is, is the bigger and better band here. All right, we got some Converge going up against Buggin'. Now Buggin', new band, Chicago, really cool band, really fucking awesome riffs, amazing vocalist, love the songs, Love the like the whole balance and energy and vibe. It's just very cool, very laid back. I love everything about Buggin', but Converge is Converge, okay? They're one of the most technical metalcore bands to ever do stuff. They're very adventurous. They come out with different stuff after different stuff, you know what I mean? They're not afraid to take risks. They've alienated like half their fan base and then regained them over and over again. That's kind of just like what they do. And I gotta, you gotta put Converge through on this one. Converge. I'm sorry, is totally crushing bugging. It's almost not fair. All right, this is a pretty good matchup. We got Youth of Today, who kind of set the standard for the whole youth crew culture that would go throughout the 90s and then kind of die off a little bit. But a lot of people, a lot of crews were inspired by Youth of Today. Anytime you heard the word crew or anytime you heard the word youth in anything, it was inspired by Youth of Today. Going up against Circle Jerks. You know, Keith Morris, the guy that was banished from Black Flag. Well, he went on to start the Circle Jerks over here. And I'm putting Youth Crew, Starters, Revolutionaries, Youth of Today forward on this one uh, easily. All right, we got early 2000s, Terror, and they're still going. They're, Terror is a great band. Scott Vogel, the, the, the vocalist. Vogel, the vocalist, he's very, uh, I don't know, iconic, I guess. He kind of walks the line between tough guy and approachable guy, but on stage, he wants that brutality, and you gotta love it. Going up against Baltimore's End It, who I think is just a better band, a cooler band, right? Better songs, they're just way more fun to listen to, way more fun to watch. Uh, End It, I'm sorry, are crushing terror. This might be a hot take with some hardcore fans out there, but I'm sorry. And it's just a better band. Oh, this is a tough one because World of Pleasure, one of my favorite bands currently, going up against New York hardcore legends, Madball. Freddie Madball would hunt me down if I didn't put him forward here. So Madball is going forward here. And, and then we got Turnstile going up against Comeback Kid. Now Turnstile has been able to do that thing. They kind of did what I was saying Hatebreed did. They kind of transitioned to like a bigger audience, but they kind of had to change their style to do it. Uh, Comeback Kid, on the other hand, they've been just like a hardcore band from Canada, just like kicking ass for decades now, and I personally like them a whole lot more. But Turnstile kind of left their mark on the culture a little bit harder than Comeback Kid in the shorter time that they've been around. So Turnstile is going forward, even though I don't like Glow On that much. Okay, you want to talk about youth crew bands. Both of these bands could be kind of considered bands that were inspired by that whole Youth of Today movement, okay? Turning Point going up against Bane. Turning Point, a much smaller band than Bane, but they write such cool songs that I love to listen to even to this day. But Bane is just like a legendary band, so hype. Bane is clearly going forward here. And then we got classic Floor Punch. Oh, I love Floor Punch. It is some of the most basic hardcore music you'll ever listen to, if that's what you want. If you just want hardcore music that looks like it has a like collegiate font and you just want to punch the floor to it, <laughs> that's, that's this stuff here. And I love it. I love the novelty of it. I think it's fun. I think it's just like a good time. But going up against Drain, Drain is just like the modern day craziest band going right now. People always bring their like their floaties and their little sharks and their little, I don't know, wakeboards and surfboards. And you know, people just are going crazy for Drain right now. So Drain 
is moving forward here. Okay, now we're getting a little bit serious. We got Minor Threat going up against Converge. Now, Converge, much longer career, much better technically, much better live, have a much more varied discography, but Minor Threat will always be remembered for straight edge and DIY as like a whole thing. So putting those two things up against one another, I, uh, it's really, it's like apples to oranges, you know what I mean? But because of the pummeling nature of Converge, now, now get those commenting figures going. Even though I like Minor Threat more, and I think Minor Threat are a more influential band overall, Converge is going forward here, folks. <laughs> Converge is moving on. Minor Threat is out of here. I know you were expecting Bad Brains and Minor Threat in the finals, but Mi Minor Threat goes out in the second round. Might be the biggest shock of the day. End it, going up against Youth of Today. Youth of Today, whole culture, end it, much better band. What are we gonna do here, folks? How are we gonna move forward here? Are we gonna go new, hot, fresh, and cool, or classic, iconic, and influential? We're going classic, iconic, and influential. Youth of Today, even though they went all culty later on, you know what I mean, in their careers in life. I might have to take them out later on in this list because of that, but they're they're moving forward here. Oh, I'm so sorry, Turnstile. Like, Madball is just crushing you right now. Madball might be the band to look out for. Holy smokes. Bane versus Drain. I did not plan that. I didn't expect to get, like, a rhyming matchup here. We got Bane versus Drain. Who's gonna move forward here? Who's the more insane? Oh, this could go either way. Both bands have huge fan bases that go crazy. Drain is kind of just getting going right now, and, like, there's no ceiling for them. They can still go to the moon. The potential there is absolutely astronomical. Bane is doing their like millionth comeback tour and by now it's kind of like, okay Bane, I get it. All right, it's cool. It's cool to see you again, of course. For sure, for sure, for sure. And overall, once it's all said and done, once we all have our tombstones up in the graveyard, I think Bane might be the band that more people remember? Oh man, this one's hard to, this one's hard. This one's tough. Oh my God, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do here. And I, I gotta also preface this with my bias that the members of Drain aren't really like the biggest fans of me, okay? And I gotta try to not like let, let that seep in, you know what I mean? Even though there's history there. And with Bane, they're like one of my favorite bands of all time. Even though there is that bias, yep, we're doing it. <laughs> Drain's the better band. Drain is just like a more fun band, you know what I mean? They just make you want to throw your body around, they make you want to bring your inflatables, they make you feel like you're having a day at the beach, even though you're jam-packed in a sweaty room with a bunch of other neckbeards. Youth of today, very short life, they were very influential, okay? But they got very culty, okay? Very, very culty in real life. Whereas Converge kind of just like leaned on the cult aesthetic sometimes for some albums or whatever. Uh, the more creative band, the more artistic band, the more, uh, I don't know, technically brilliant band, the better songwriters, the people that have more records and a longer career are, are going to be the ones winning this one. Obviously, it's going to be Converge. Madball versus Drain. <laughs> <laughs> this one, folks, this might make me an enemy or two. I'm not sure. Legendary hardcore band, Madball. Freddy Madball. If you talk about any kind of like real street hardcore, you will always, always, always bring up Madball. So many people have Madball tattoos. That logo is iconic. So many memorable songs. Oh, but Drain is just like, Drain is just a better band that is a more approachable vibe, you know? It's like vibe versus intimidation. <laughs> and that's what's going on here. And for my money, oh man, oh man, yikes. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, Freddie Madball is probably gonna come barging down my door here. Oh, but because Freddie Madball has that interview with Adam22, and I disrespect that highly, okay? That's gonna be the thing that breaks the camel's back here. We're moving Drain forward, and we're into the conference finals. Who's gonna go face Bad Brains in the absolute finals here? Is it gonna be Converge? Everything I've said about Converge up, up until this point is still true. Everything I said about Drain, likewise. Oh, God damn. And I'm looking at this through 2023 eyes, you know what I mean? And even though Converge have that fan base and have that legacy, have that history, have that lore. There's just something so cool and so special and so fresh 
and so aggressive but also approachable that has never been like really done before until Drain. Drain is just that era defining band right now and I'm putting them forward. And we're in our absolute finals, we got Bad Brains going up against Drain. Now, I don't know if they would believe me that I put Drain all the way through this bracket. I had no idea that this was gonna be the way that this was gonna work out. But this is, this is where we are. We're at Bad Brains <laughs> versus Drain. Now, so many old heads will be so mad if I don't put Bad Brains through to the very, very end here. If I don't give them the cup, the championship belt, you know what I mean? Um, and I don't think a lot of new school fans will be angry if I if I don't do Drain, you know what I mean? So I got, like basing this based on what I think people's opinion will be, will be the wrong way to approach this finals here. So we got Bad Brains, they're kind of like blink and you miss them. This is really the only record people listen to buy them today, even though they have more stuff out there. Uh, Drain, two LPs, making people go crazy, packing rooms, oh god damn. But the way that Bad Brains really, oh sugar. All right, yep, I have, I know who it is. The best hardcore band of all time is Bad Brains. If you wanna screenshot this and, and share this with your family or whatever, in case they were wondering, who the best hardcore band is. You can see how Drain made their way all the way up and then how Bad Brains kind of snaked their way through. Pretty interesting stuff over here, but we determined using facts, logic, and science through the competitive nature of sporting events to determine who the best hardcore band is. There it is. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you might like this other bracket video I did based on subgenres. Okay, see you later.